Welcome to another episode of Customer Tech Talks. I'm Ben Walters, and today I'm talking with Danish company O2Matic, who's changing the way oxygen therapy is administered. Let's learn a little bit more before we jump into the interview. Automatic is a company where we work with automatic oxygen therapy. We provide innovative solutions for patients in need of oxygen and uh, patients with uh, pulmonary diseases. Oxygen is very, very important for patients with pulmonary diseases because their body is not able to oxygenate their blood themselves. So it's very important that they get the right amount of oxygen because if you get too little oxygen, then it's very dangerous for you. And if you get too much oxygen, there's a lot of side effects. So uh, it's very important that you get the right dosage. When we have our first hospital device, it's a standalone device. Everything happens locally on this device. The feedback loop happens locally on this device. We have a user interface that is operated by nurses. Now, when we're trying to move this technology home to the patients, they're ill people. So it has to be very, very simple. That means that there's only an on-off button and very few icons telling them what to do. We really thought about how could we do least amount locally. For that, we looked at different kind of technologies and the best one out there was Microsoft Azure. So I'm joined today by Oaken Gorkin, CEO from O2Matic. Oaken, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So we just saw how you're innovating the O2 therapy space. Can you share a little history on how O2Matic got started here? Yeah, of course. So uh, we actually got started uh, 10 years ago. Back then we were working for larger companies and uh, hospitals. And uh, one day we were wondering why is the technology so much based on manual laboring? Why isn't there a smarter technology out there? And that was back in 2010. Uh, so we got together, you know, uh, for a full day workshop with doctors and engineers, and they were actually very interested. And we come up with a number of, of smart solutions, but the, the smartest one was automatic uh, oxygen therapy. And we could see that the doctors were really into it and they, they actually didn't understand why this technology wasn't out there, why this concept hadn't been invented yet. That just makes a, a lot of sense, especially given the complexities that can arise from someone who's relying on a device like this to live. Can you step us through the device and how it works? Yeah, sure. So uh, we have an oxygen uh, source here that can be a bottle, it can be a concentrator, or it can be a wall outlet at the hospital, which you connect to the device via oxygen hose. And then you have an oxygen output that goes into uh, the patient mask or a catheter. Uh, which provides oxygen to the patient. You also have a sensor. In this case, this is a Bluetooth sensor. We also have wired sensors that you connect to the patient's finger, and that's continuously measuring the oxygenation in the patient's blood. And based on that continuous measuring, we're uh, adapting the flow every second to the patient. So it's an IoT and AI-enabled oxygen monitor, which is honestly really impressive. Now, the device you just showed us is for in hospital use, but with the power of Azure behind the device, this also allows you to deploy these remotely, allowing for O2 therapy in homes. Can you talk a little bit about this application? Yeah, of course. So there are, of course, some similarities between the two devices. They use the same you know, overall concept, which means a closed loop uh, system. But there's two major differences. One is that this device, uh, the patient is also the user, so it has to be very, very simple. And you don't want to walk around with an ox uh, oximeter all the time. This means that we have invented something very smart that we are patenting uh, that we call sessions, treatment sessions, which means that the patient uh, puts on the pulse oximeter a number of times a day. And then based on that, the device tells the patients when the next measurement should occur. The other smart thing is that we are doing everything from the cloud. That means that the doctor can set up the patient from the cloud and the doctor can also monitor a number of patients. At the same time, we have the service providers that can monitor the devices via a dashboard that is specially designed for them. So we have a lot of opportunities when it comes to you know, Azure using the Azure technology and uh, you know, we uh, we have a lot more features on this device. So Oaken, really great to see how this is being applied and used in homes. Can you share with the audience some of the challenges you're facing um, in, in being able to use this device in home and, and how you're dealing with that? 
Yeah, so uh, one of our biggest challenges is definitely data. So right now, this system is is based on a lot of data being able to, you know, uh, being gathered at a central monitoring system. And to be able to scale that uh, to different countries all over the world, that would be very, very challenging. Every country have their own requirements. In Europe, for instance, we have GDPR um, that has a lot of requirements on how we handle personalized data. So that will be uh, very, very hard to make a solution that fits all. Right. And even though you know you have HIPAA compliance within the Microsoft services for the storage of data, like you said, you also need to deal with some of those more specific regional requirements uh, when you're working with that data. So, you know, really you know, big challenges when you're going to a global audience, of course. Now, shifting gears a little bit, can you share some of the lessons you've learned while developing this device and any tips you'd share with others who are looking to take a similar approach? Yeah, so uh, one of uh, the most important lessons I think we've learned is that we have to make use of the resources we have. Uh, that also includes our partners, for instance, Microsoft. You guys have great support uh, functions uh, and we actually use that kind of late after we develop most of the solution. I would say, you know, to somebody who's trying to do a technology based on Azure, you know, talk with the right persons, get the right context and use the opportunities that Microsoft provides. Really just sounds like this is the beginning for O2Matic and, and where we'll start seeing these devices as well. Can you share with the audience what's next and, and where you're going from here? Yeah, so what's next is to overcome those big challenges that we've just been talking about and scale this around the world. First, we will have to do you know, pilot testing, pilot implementations on a, a number of selected countries. And after that, uh, we want to you know, scale up to the rest of the world. Well, Oaken, thank you so much for taking time with us today. It's really exciting to see where this technology is going in the future. Thank you very much. And of course, if you want to learn more about O2Matic, IoT and AI, you can head over to the links on screen now to find out more. You can also follow us on YouTube and social for updates on all the new episodes. Thank you again for joining us and we'll see you on the next Customer Tech Talks.